In this video, we're going to have a look at the static electricity section, which starts off with you watching a video. Then it has asked you to look at the atom. Now, this is a relatively easy part that you probably have done at your last school. So just to recap, atoms make up everything. They consist of a central region, which we call the nucleus. In there are two types of particle. We'll call these red ones here the protons and they have a charge of plus one so positive one there are two types of charge in the universe again we don't know why but there are positive plus and negative minus obviously you can also be neutral which means you don't have a charge the other one in the nucleus is actually neutral and this is called the neutron the name sounds like neutral so that makes it nice and easy this has no charge zero or you can write neutral. Now whizzing around on the outside, now remember that the scale, remember the activities we did in class and the videos we watched to emphasize this, this is nowhere near scale. The electron would be miles and miles away from this if this was to scale, but because we don't have so much paper, I'm just gonna draw it here. So remember this is not to scale. Here's the electron. And this has a negative one or minus one charge. Now, in order for this atom, this to be an atom, it has to have the same number of protons and neutrons. So I actually need to add in another electron whizzing around the outside. These actually move around out here. So just a reminder of that, if we want an atom, atoms are neutral. That means they're the same number of protons and electrons. So in the picture above there was two protons, so there'll need to be two electrons. Why? Remember the protons, if we have two protons, two times p, that's going to have a charge of plus two, because each proton is plus one, and therefore if we have two times electrons, two times minus one is minus two. See when we add those charges together, we end up with it being neutral, and that's the key thing, atoms are neutral. If you don't want a neutral atom, then it's called an ion, and that's when we add We'll take away an electron and it's going to kind of link into the next topic which is down here electrostatics so we've already answered all of these and finding a fact write a sentence or two summarizing your findings that's here that can be just done using some research on the internet part one of electrostatics asks you to name the two types of charges which we mentioned and there's a clue in question two to those and you can look up the law of charges. That just tells you what attracts and what repels. And we have looked at that in class. It then asks you to add a label to those, which again, I'll leave you to do. So remembering using your law that you've written to do the same charges attract or repel. And then you could answer that based on that. Question four asks you which part moves or is transferred when we create charge. So let's see if we can get an idea of what creates charge let's say we have some sort of cloth here which is neutral and a rod now some types of materials when they're rubbed we create charge so if we rub these two materials together we're going to charge it by friction so charging by friction that's where this is rubbed up and down against this cloth now what can happen when that happens is electrons can be transferred okay and they'll always tell you which way they go let's assume this time the electrons so here they are are transferred from the cloth to the rod now, only electrons move. The positive charges can't move. Now, if electrons leave and go to the rod, there's going to be extra negative charges over here. And where they've left over on the cloth, that's going to leave behind some positive charges because each of those positive charges can't move. They originally had a negative charge with them, so they were neutral. But now the electrons have left, we can see that this cloth has become positive and this has become negative. So that's charging by friction. The other type of way that things can be charged, and it asks you to look at it in step six, I've kind of done five just a moment ago, is electrostatic induction. This is where you take one neutral object, so here's a nice big metal ball. This is neutral at the moment, so we've got the same number of positives and negatives. So there's no overall charge. And if we bring our rod from up here, which was negative, towards this, here it is, 
a negative rod. Those negative charges are going to repel the other negative charges in here, these ones here. They're not going to want to hang around because they're being repelled by this rod. They're going to have a force this way. They're going to move over to this side. So what we end up with are more negatives over this side. So if we now split this ball in half, you can see that this side has become positive. This side has become negative because it has six negatives and three positives. So this has been charged by induction. Overall, you might notice, actually, if you count the number of positives and negatives in this dome, you can see that actually it's still neutral as overall, but this half is positive and this half is negative. And that's how charging by induction works. In this step here, and I just remind that anything in blue, although it's quite hard to see with this yellow highlight, but does say above it, is to just be copied into your notes. These are part of your notes, and remember the aim is that you do this in your homework so we can use the lesson time to do experiments. In this section, we're going to link this idea of charges being separated to voltage and current. The first bit discusses voltage. Now, voltage is quite a difficult concept, and it can also be called potential difference, as you can see here, or electric motive force. But notice this point here, it doesn't matter which one you use, and I'm just going to use voltage going forward. In year uh, 11, we will kind of look at that in more detail. So what is voltage? Well, let's say we have... And this is a symbol which we'll learn shortly, but you probably did last year, for a battery or cell of the battery. And we say it's a 6 volt, and that's the voltage of the battery. So units of voltage, or EMF, or potential difference, as we said, is the volt, and it's got the symbol V. The units are the volt, symbol V. Now, as electrons flow through this battery, we won't talk about which direction they go at this stage, but um, we'll look at that in more detail in a later topic. But let's say they're going from, um, let's say they're going this way, in this case, electrons are going that way. Now, as they go through here, for each amount of charge, they're going to get six joules. Okay, so six volts tells you that you get six joules per coulomb. A coulomb is a unit of charge. Now, electrons have a tiny, tiny charge, so actually that's millions and millions of electrons. So when millions and millions of electrons go through, we know they're going to get six joules of energy. So they'll enter here with zero joules, and they'll leave here with six joules. They'll then travel around the circuit, and when they reach a bulb, like this, that's a symbol for a bulb, say it's a six volt bulb, we know that bulbs use up energy, they don't give energy like batteries. So they'll go in this side with their six joules, and they'll leave with zero joules. So we say that there's a potential difference, or voltage, of six volts. It's the amount of energy they lose. And then they return back to the battery and come back in here, to get more energy. Current's a bit easier to understand. Current is the rate of flow of charge. What does that mean? That basically means, if imagine, well you can think of it like water in a pipe, it's the amount of water passing a point every second. In a circuit, well it's not water, it's electrons flowing, so it's kind of the amount of electrons that pass a point every second. The rate means per second. This has a unit. It's called the amp, or amps if there's multiple of them, and we give it the symbol A. Now, confusingly, the symbol for current, just like for voltage, the symbol was V, uh, just like for energy, the symbol is E. For current, it is I. We can't use C because that's used by other things, like the speed of light. So we use I for current. A bit tricky. You've just got to learn that. So that just explains all the parts here and also helps you fill in this table here, but you can also look it up. Step three, it talks about the Van de Graaff generator, which we will use this week. And you can add a labeled image of one, have a look online and label the key parts. We will also have discussed this in class. And then step five down here, just asks you to copy some stuff down into your book. And then you need to do a bit of research. State the most common place that you'd find 12 volts, 240 volts, and 1.5 volt supplies. An example has been done for you. For example, here it's saying that 240 volt supply can be found in AA batteries. Well, that's not correct. So don't copy that down. But that's the sort of sentence I want to see in your book. So for example, you might write down 1.5 volt batteries or supplies, sorry, can be found and then have a look, see if you can have a look on the internet and see if you can find where that exists. 
240 volts is very important. Okay, use that every day, hint, hint. See if you can find out where that comes from as well. That covers all of the notes pressed for this time. There are also some problem solving questions which you're welcome to extend yourself and have a go at if you finished all of the above. Thank you for watching.